Taking a look at some of the latest, most reliable computer models, we are seeing some indications that we could see tropical cyclone development as early as next week. If we were to continue to move forward, let's first take a look at the GFS models forecast. And as you can see, for the most part, it's relatively quiet when it comes to any sort of really organized area of thunder showers or a very organized area of, of lower pressure. We do have a low pressure, but of course, this is too far up northward to be considered any sort of tropical entity. And even then, it's no near land so we won't need to worry about that but moving forward to the forecast if we were to fast forward into the Friday time frame we see an area of higher convective activity right over Hispaniola extending into Puerto Rico as well where we do see heavier rain showers so watch out for that as we approach the Thursday and Friday time frame um, as this convective energy continues to head further northward thanks to a weakness in ridging thanks to an upper level low that's located right around this area right around the Bermuda Triangle so that's going to allow this convective energy to move further north and continuing to move forward we see that this low pressure system becomes more than just an area of enhanced convective activity we see a well-defined low pressure um, pressure system develop out of this just north of the Dominican Republic and it's fairly weak of course we see that the millibar pressure is at a thousand eight millibars and if we were to take an even closer look the storm system will be rather lopsided when it comes to the um, where exactly the convective um, where exactly the convective activity develops because we do see most of the heavier convective activity is located on the northeastern quadrant of this storm system while the southwestern quadrant is relatively dry compared to the northern portion of this storm system so um just off of that it's very likely that it won't be that strong thanks to how lopsided the convective activity will be and that stinks in part due to the dry air that's expected to be just to the east of this storm system but we clearly see that this storm system could be strong enough to maybe be considered a sub tropical entity as this storm system i if this were to develop i'll um i find it very difficult to see it develop into a fully tropical entity because it's definitely gonna deal it's gonna definitely need instability to help enhance its convective activity because let's say if this were a regular amount of dry air that's located on the western portion of this storm system it, without the instability this convective activity wouldn't exist and it'll just drift away with the dry air but we're seeing just enough instability that's enhancing the convective activity enough to where it definitely won't be a fully tropical entity if this were to develop but it is still over sea surf temperatures that are hovering around the low 80s let me show you guys that right now Here's a quick look at the ocean temperatures and where the GFS model wants to develop this storm system is right around this area and we see that the ocean temperatures are just above the 80 degree threshold and of course this is expected to move further northward eventually into cooler water temperatures that are just below um, 80 degrees and by the way um, anything that's below 26 degrees Celsius is below 80 degrees and in this map what's considered above 80 degrees is the yellow color and um, further up the color scale up um, um, onto red and pink so um, if this storm system were to move into the green that means that the ocean temperatures would be fall below 80 degrees which is expected once the storm system continues to head further northward thanks to a weakness in ridging however it's not impossible for a subtropical storm to develop even if the ocean water temperature are below 80 degrees because weeks um, it still could absorb just enough heat associated with cooler water temperatures and if it has enough instability it still could be considered a subtropical entity so that's still a possibility as we appro um, approach this weekend with this storm system even if the ocean temperatures might not be exactly in its favor but the GFS model expects the storm system to develop just to north of Hispaniola, so it is um it um it still could be considered um a tropical NC if this were to develop at a strength that's strong enough. So definitely keep that in mind. But probably the most important thing you're 
probably concerned about when it comes to this potential tropical storm is where exactly it'll go and the good news is that it isn't expected to really do much outside of maybe bring an enhanced amount of convective activity over the Dominican Republic and Haiti and maybe an enhanced amount of convective activity right over Bermuda as its millibar pressure would still hover around 1009 millibars and there's just enough convective activity surrounding the center circulation to where to the point where the GFS model still expects a very uh, a relatively organized center circulation to develop with this entity so it um there still could very well maybe be a subtropical storm as far north as Bermuda right now the chances are low if we were to take a look at the seven day graphical tropical weather outlook the National Hurricane Center isn't even listing the possibility of this developing into a tropical storm just yet or even a subtropical entity that could change if we see the GFS model persist on that idea and we're gonna need to wait and see how much convective activity there will really be right over the Caribbean so definitely stay tuned for that over the next few days however it seems like the chances are low Low, mainly due to the fact that of course although i did say that you um a storm system could develop in water temperatures that are below 80 degrees of course it's much more difficult than if the water temperatures were a little bit um more a little bit um higher than 80 degrees um and even in the area where the ocean temperatures are above 80 degrees uh upper ocean heat content isn't really isn't very deep at this um during this time of the year because of course the water tip we're not even at the beginning of the hurricane season the um the um deeper you go um you don't need to go very deep to find cooler water temperatures so it the, um there very well might be a decent amount of upwelling that could completely remove um the 80 degree water temperatures very quickly which would make it even more difficult for this to develop and let me show you guys the relative humidity associated with this storm system and like i said there's plenty of dry air that's gonna hinder this and make it unlikely for this to develop we we're still gonna keep an eye on this with the gfs model still persisting on this idea and we're gonna need to see if that continues um but right now it seems like it's less likely that it's going to develop thanks to the dry air and of course the wind shear during this time of the year is very strong we clearly see the strong upper level winds between the areas of the atmosphere where the millibar pressure is hovering around 200 to 850 millibars of wind shear is very strong so all those factors make it, it um will likely make it very difficult for this to develop into a tropical storm but there is a decent amount of instability and the water temperatures are still maybe just warm enough for that possibility to exist but i need to see a little bit more before i can raise that confidence with this storm system and if we were to take a look at the european model or another reason why the chance is looking low for a tropical storm to develop out of this area of convective activity is that the european model is isn't very confident that this area of convective activity will develop a well-defined center circulation while we do see a smaller low pressure system the convective activity isn't as strong um and it's still um very lopsided even more lopsided than the um gfs model where the convective activity is almost entirely on the eastern quadrant of this storm system while the western quadrant is completely dry so at this point it's less likely about keep you guys updated if we do see any major changes with the forecast now let's move on to something that's even more in the long-term future so if we were to, to take a look at that from the gfs model we're clearly going to see that there's going to be an influx of convective activity moving through the northern portion of South America and eventually into the southern Caribbean as it's very common for that to occur this time of the year as we approach the early part of the hurricane season so this is May 30th we see that a low pressure system is located right around the border of Colombia and Venezuela and it's expected to move northward thanks to a weakness in ridging and if we were to continue to move forward what What's interesting is that the GFS model does develop somewhat of a well-defined low pressure system right around the southern Caribbean. Now, of course, is very far out. We're going into June now, which is 282 hours out. So definitely more than 10 days out with this. So take this with a huge grain of salt. We're going to need to see if this idea persists, but um, it seems likely at the very least there's going to be an enhanced area of 
convective activity and precipitation over the Southern Caribbean by the time we approach um, past the Memorial Day weekend and into the first week of June. We're going to need to see how the conditions will play out though to really determine if we're going to see a tropical storm out of this area of convective activity. And let's say if a tropical storm were to develop, of course, Central America, you need to keep close eye on this, potentially as far um, east as Jamaica and Cuba. You need to pay close attention to this as well. And even if this does develop into a tropical entity, of course, be aware of the possibility of heavier rainfall and potentially flooding associated with events like this. It's too early to really define what impacts they're going to see for certain, but definitely at least be aware of this over the next several days as I'll keep you guys updated. But... The key things, of course, will be the water temperatures, and the water temperatures won't really be an issue this far south. The water temperatures are definitely well above the 80 degree threshold this far south into the Caribbean. Um, and of course, wind shear and dry air will also um, are also factors we need to keep in mind. But taking a look at the relative humidity during, um, um, based on what the GFS model is forecasting, there isn't expected to be a ton of dry air, which is very interesting and could enhance this chance of this storm system developing. However, as this um, area of convective activity moves northward, it could deal with maybe some dry air in the Gulf of Mexico, but it's definitely, but there's definitely, I'll, I'll say enough um, humidity and at least lift going on over the Caribbean when it comes to the amount of convective activity for the chance to at least be a little bit higher with this um, area of moisture. And the wind shear, interestingly enough, isn't very strong either. Taking a look at the wind shear in the upper levels, we see that the wind shear is relatively light for this area of convective activity, which is very interesting and could enhance the possibility of this um, developing into a tropical storm. We're going to see if this keeps up and you're probably wondering um, if the wind shear is so light and if there's not a lot of dry air in the Caribbean, why is the GFS model still expecting a fairly weak scenario? Because look at the low pressure system. It's still at around 1,010 millibars. That isn't really a strong tropical storm considering the fact that two or at least three of the factors I just mentioned, the water temperatures, wind shear, and the dry air won't really be that detrimental um, as this um, area moves northward but the thing is is that there's so much moisture that it's it's going to be very difficult for this um small low pressure system to compete against all this um this large area of convective activity because the air molecules could only go um to so many places without the vorticity um without the vorticity um pretty much being very weak around each um, individual center of circulation. And in this case, there's just so many other areas of thunder shower activity that's just competing for the same limited amount of energy, which is likely limiting this storm system from really developing rapidly despite the um, conditions seemingly looking conducive over this area by the time we approach the first week of May. So we're going to need to see the area of moisture become a little bit smaller and a little bit more consolidated for this to have a higher chance of developing into a tropical storm um, based on what I'm seeing right now the moisture is just too spread out which means that the energy and the vorticity will be too spread out for this to really um, gain enough vortis uh, vorticity for the wind speed to increase and really strengthen into a tropical entity so we're going to need to see the moisture become a little bit smaller and more consolidated and of course land interaction will be another thing that this area of low pressure would need to worry about because of course as the storm system continues to head over land the friction increases you disconnect from pretty much the fuel of um, tropical um, cyclones which is the water um, the warm ocean water so that definitely would help weaken this storm system if it were to take uh, a track closer to land so we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to that factor as well but um, what I could say with more certainty is that by the time we approach late May and it's early June, there will be an, an enhanced risk of convective activity moving through Central America and the, and the Caribbean. And we're going to need to really see um, other factors before I can say that there's a good possibility of tropical storm developing. It's just a little bit too far to say for certain. But that's it for now, guys, and I thank you guys for watching.